Yeah, it's okay, please. Yes, okay, my name is Horst Fascher and I'm born in Hamburg. And I was there when the Beatles came to Hamburg first on the 16th of August 1960. And I was there, I also played the first night at the Bambi Kino on the 17th of August. And I went there for about 20 minutes, half an hour, because Tony Sheridan played at the Kaiser Keller. And uh, after 20 minutes, I find out that the Beatles were not that good as Tony Sheridan was. And uh, after 20 minutes, half an hour, I said to the other to the other people who went with me, I said, I'm going back to uh, listen to Tony. And uh, after I get back and find out that the girls didn't follow me, uh, I asked the girls, why do you stay there and listen to the Beatles who play worse music than Tony? And they were saying to me, uh, but they look good. And that was the first time that I found out that uh, it is very important that the boys on stage make a good picture for the girls. Because where the girls go, the boys go. and. Uh, when they all come together, then you have Gary the club who is running. And uh, then after Tony finished at the Kaiser Keller and the Beatles finished at the Indra, we met in the morning for something to eat in Harold's. Harold's was a bistro imbis. And it was open in the morning and uh, there we could eat. Many people went there for, for something to eat. And the Beatles and Tony, we met there and we eat there and we talk there and we introduce each other. And from that day on, I became friend to, friends, to the, friends to the Beatles. And uh, yeah, till 1962, till we opened the Star Club, the Beatles were following me because I helped them, I took care about them, I made sure that they got a better job at the top 10 after they finished the, uh, the, the, the Indra and played later on at the Kaiser Keller and uh, from the Kaiser Keller they went to the top 10 as you know and uh, that was my arrangement because Peter Eckhorn, the owner of the Top Ten, he came there one morning and tried to find out if the Beatles can help him to find a new band. And uh, the Beatles were saying, uh, no, but you better ask our manager. And they pointed on me and uh, Peter Eckhorn came then to me and uh, from that day on I was the manager. And I didn't even know that what what a manager means. And uh, okay, then I was the manager, and then I find out uh, I I know that I have to take care more care about the Beatles. And uh, then one day I spoke to Peter Eckhorn. I said, uh, Why you don't take the Beatles in your club? Because the Kaiser Keller is a shitty club. The boys sleep there in a room with no windows. The boys had, had to wash their clothes there under cold water because there was no warm water and the boys washed their clothes in the ladies' toilet or in the men's toilet. And uh, sometimes I took their clothes with to my mother's house and my mother cooked the clothes and made them white again because they were already gray. And uh, one day, I, my father said, uh, you always told me that your boys are always hungry. And he said, bring them to our house and they can eat here some bean soup. And that's what I did as well. And uh, from that day on, we became more close. They e we even called each other brother. And uh, yes. Uh, Till the day 
said I quit at the top ten because I had some uh, arguments with Peter Eckhorn, the owner of the top ten, and then I went to another uh, club and to find out to, to to find some work for me. And there were there were a guy who came every morning and were eating his white bread and were drinking black coffee. And this white bread was just bought from the bakery and it was very fresh. And when you break white bread you, you, you always have many many little things on the floor. And I had to clean it all the time. And then I said one one day to my brother who helped me at the club, I said, uh, I threw that guy out when he makes here so much uh, dirty yeah. things in my club. <laughs> and then uh, he said, that is not a nice later, man. You have to uh, you have to be careful. And I said, oh, vice later. I said uh, he got a lot of clubs here in Hamburg. I said, that's the right man for me. So I went around the bar, I went on, on to Manfred Weisley and asked him if he uh, is, is, is willing or if he is interesting in opening a, a club. And uh, he said, what, what kind of club do you think then? Is I got a new concept for a club who is not here in Hamburg yet. And then he told me, he said, uh, Okay, come in three or two or three days, come to my office, and then, then you tell me all about your uh, ideas and your new concept. And then I went there and I, I told him everything, how I think, uh, what kind of club it has to be. And then uh, he said, that sounds good. And now I look for a club uh, who, 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 who will be the, the, the right place for your ideas. And then uh, two or three days later, he come into the club where I was working in the bar. On the bar, he was saying, "I can get a club. It is now still a movie theater. Do you know the Stan Kino? Stan means star." And I said, "Yes, I go there once in a while." And uh, he said, "Do you think that there will be, there will be the, right, the right rooms for having a, a, a new club?" I said, "Fantastic." And uh, so we came in, we came to an agreement that I am supposed to fly to England and buy, book the bands and he starts rebuilding the cinema into a rock and roll club. And that naturally what I did because I know the Beatles and uh, we became friends in the early days before and uh, my idea was right away to go to Liverpool and book the Beatles for the Star Club because uh, the rumor was around going around in Hamburg that the Beatles come, will be back, uh, will be coming back to Hamburg and play again in the top ten. And uh, my idea was to let that not happen. So I went there and uh, I told the Beatles all about it, and they were saying, "But horse." We have already a manager now. You have to talk our manager. And then I find out that the new manager was Brian Epstein. So, and I said, after I find out that I couldn't uh, do anything uh, between them, between the Beatles and me, direct, I find out that, that, that I had to go to and talk to his manager, to their manager. And then I went there the next day and uh, I spoke to Brian Epstein and he was saying, it's impossible uh, to go to Hamburg in the Star Club because we have a, a, a mouse agreement with uh, the owner from the, from the top ten. And then I said, okay, if you think you can bring the Beatles back to Hamburg and not come into the club where I am the manager, then we finish the club. We smash the club down and the Beatles will not have a place to play. And he said, uh, "This I have to ask and talk to the to the boys first. This is a new situation." And then uh, he spoke to the boys the next day. But on the night when this was happening with Epstein, this this uh, this business talk, we went out, and we had a lot of fun, 
and I spoke to rebuilders where we were all a little bit tipsy and they were saying no no we, we, we will tell Brian we go with you because we always go with you and uh, yeah, the next day I had a date with Epstein again and then he said I spoke to the boys and the boys des decided to go with you and that was it uh, so I had the Beatles for the Star Club in Hamburg we opened in 1962 on the 13th of April and the rest is history yeah uh, thank you thank you of course <laughs> okay. thank you very much okay yeah.